module 27 probability section 1 probability basics in module 1 we have seen the difference between deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning deductive reasoning means it is from the general to the specific so for example uh, uh, you know it is used often in statistics because we have a null hypothesis and we are testing the validity of the null hypothesis by deductive reasoning right so for example all men are mortal socrates is a man and therefore socrates is mortal so in such cases truth is certain you know it is inevitable or you can say valid or invalid something like uh, significant or non-significant in statistical hypothesis testing but in the case of probability the case is different in this case it follows the inductive reasoning or induction from bottom to the top in like induction cooker so this swan is white that swan is white and therefore all swans are white so that conclusion is not valid i told you it can be therefore most probably all swans are white that is fine because in uh, you know in inductive reasoning there is nothing like certainty it's always probable so there is always a probability in the inductive reasoning right so some arguments are cogent where the probability is very high while some arguments are fallacious where the, the probability is quite low so probability follows inductive reasoning while statistics follow deductive reasoning so there are three views of probability the first view which is most popular for the commoner is something called the classical view which is uh, uh, credited the the invention of this uh, classical view is uh, uh, credited to a french mathematician called pierre simon laplace so this is the classical view is the proportion of possible outcome the probability is defined in uh, in terms of proportion of the possible outcomes that is basically proportion uh, the probability of an event a is equal to all the possible ways that success can happen divided by complete outcome so the all ways where all kinds of outcomes can happen for example there are only two possibilities of the outcomes if you toss a coin that is head or tail so that is n you know while the number of ways the success can happen is only one the head is only one or tail is only one so probability of getting a head in coin toss is 1 divided by 2 s divided by n is equal to 0.5 so that kind of uh, calculation of the probability is what you call the classical view of the probability that is the proportion of the possible outcome so next view is something called frequentist view uh, it is credited to uh, uh, an English mathematician called John Venn, the same person behind the Venn diagram, you know, uh, the, the classical Venn diagram used in logic. So it defines as a proportion of times an event would observe in the future if the observations were repeated indefinitely. So it is something like frequency matters here. So that is why it is called frequentist view. So it's often used in uh, weather predictions and all the frequentist view is very common, you know. So for the last uh, years, for 10 years and on this particular day, there hadn't been any rain. So probability of the rain is very less on this particular day like that. Then the third view is Bayesian view. That is uh, again an English mathematician called Thomas Bayes is credited for this view of the probability. So it defines as, it treats probabilities as a degree of certainty. So that a statement is true or posterior probability is provided. So based upon our prior knowledge or prior probability, you are defining the posterior probability. The, the later probability is called posterior probability. So we have our own prior knowledge. So as we know the prior knowledge, when uh, you know, as evidence became more and more clear, we update the probability in Bayesian view. So that is more advanced way of defining the probability, especially it's a computer intensive process, the Bayesian view of the probability. So the, we have got three probability view. So what is the important use of the probability in sciences as well as in general life? So usually the uncertainty is before we come to know about the probability, the uncertainty is something highly subjective. So no objective way to quantify the uncertainty, but probability allows us precisely to quantify the uncertainty. In sciences, uncertainty is very common. There is nothing like axiomatic truth in most of the empirical sciences except mathematics. So there is actually a prop, the uncertainty is the, the quantification of the uncertainty is extremely important. That is the main uh, use of the probability. 
So uncertainty is not something subjective or beyond the rational thinking. Quantifying uncertainty matters. For example, vaccine testing. You know, if you want to test the efficacy of the vaccine, the, the probability matters there. So disproving the climate change skepticism. So those people who are saying, arguing the climate change is not man-made or climate change is uh, incorrect. So you have to have the probability or, the, the you know, the uncertainty needs to be precisely quantified if you want to. Uh, you know, to uh, uh, evidence-based scientific contradiction to that kind of pseudo-scientific uh, stances. Or aircraft design. So if you want to see that the uncertainty of an aircraft crash, you know, so we have to precisely quantify the uncertainty through the probability. So you can consider the four probabilistic forecast and outcomes. So we are giving a, a, a test here. So we have got forecast and the outcomes so what can be concluded based on the outcome about the correctness of the forecast so this weather forecast is it correct or is it uh, uh, incorrect or is it uh, uh, you know unable to uh, say anything about the we cannot conclude so there are three options for each of these predictions so you will have to see it the first one is the weather forecast says it's going to rain with 90 percentage probability tomorrow in Batinda but the day turns out to be all sun and no rain well this happens you might have seen that in your city as well the weather predictions say there is a rain but there is no rain so does that mean the prediction is outrightly right or outrightly wrong or we cannot be concluded about the validity of it think for a second and come back to it so the answer here is that cannot be concluded because this prediction says 90 percentage rain. So that means it's a frequentist view. So if you look 10 days, 9 days on average it will rain. So one day it will not rain. So that tomorrow whatever the date is might be one among the tail, one among those days which is uh, which will which is not having any rain so it is 90 percentage probability does not mean 100 percentage so there is still a probability that uh, the rain might not be there next is suppose you monitor a weather forecaster the tv weather forecaster for a long time you only consider the days for which the the forecast says 70 percentage chance of the rain and you find that in the long run the average it rains three out of every five days so what is your opinion about the forecaster? Is he right? Is he wrong or cannot be concluded? So basically, uh, you know, we the empirical evidence says that you get, you know, on a long run, the average it rains three out of five days. That means 60 percentage, 0.6 is the probability. But the person said 70 percentage probability for the rain, you know. So in uh, strictly speaking, it's wrong. The prediction is wrong. But the usual stance for the TV presenters or TV weather forecast persons is that, you know, it tends to be more negative. So that even if it is, you know, positive, then you should feel happy about it. So they don't want to make you really sad. So rain, usually rain is not something happy that people feel. So that uh, the, the forecaster will say it is 70% chance. So it is really bad that tomorrow is going to rain. So if the rain is only 60, then you will be happy. The viewers will be happy. So that is a tactic that most of the TV weather forecast people um, adopt. The third one is here. The United States presidential election in 2016, a well-known political forecast blog, 538, gave uh, Hillary Clinton 71.4 percentage chance of winning versus Trump's 28.6 percentage. However, contrary to the prediction, the Donald Trump was elected as 45th president of the United States. So what is your opinion about the prediction of this uh, 538 blog? Right? wrong or cannot be concluded so again the answer here is cannot be concluded because even though the the chance of the uh, you know the uh, clinton was 71.4 while the trump's chance is only 28.6 you know the rare instances can happen outliers are there so it doesn't mean that uh, you know the chance for clinton were 100 percent had it been 100 percentage then definitely uh, you you can say the prediction is wrong but there is still a chance of the tail. So never forget the tail. You know, whatever the predictions say is only a matter of uncertainty. So it's just quantifying the uncertainty. So in this case, it cannot be concluded is the right answer. 
So if there are n likely outcomes of an experiment of which one is called success S, then the probability of success or probability of even A is equal to S divided by n. So this is a classical view of Laplace which I just explained to you. So uh, you know example is probability of getting a head in the coin toss experiment is 1 divided by 5 that is equal to 0.5. So always a probability uh, fluctuate between 0 and 1. So it's always fraction. It's never negative and it's never more than 1. You know it can be 0 of course probability of 0 means no there is absolutely no chance for an event to occur. So probability of A prime that means the probability of an event A not occurring is equal to 1 minus probability of A that is probability of event occurring. You know so not having head on a coin toss means probability of having head 1 minus probability of having head. So that means 1 minus 0.5 is again 0.5. So that is what A prime is. Let us consider one example here. The first example is probability of getting a number card of spades in 52 deck card. You know. So how will you calculate this probability of getting a number card of spades in 52 card deck. Well the question here is that number card of the spades. So as you see that number cards is starting from 2 all the way goes to 10. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 9 number cards here. So out of what is that uh, uh, the total is 52 for sure right. So 52 cards are there of which 9 are uh, the number cards. So the number cards of the spades is 9. So number cards of uh, hearts or clubs you know or diamonds are all uh, 9 each. So in this case number of success this is s is equal to n, n is total number of ways the cards is 52. So s by n that is a Laplace equation for the probability 9 by 52 is equal to 0 0.17. So this is the probability of uh, getting this number cards of sp uh, spades in 52 cards deck. So as you can see the probability is quite low that is only 17 percentage is the chance for it. Let us also explain this uh, uh, you know we can also put this into the odds. Odds is basically 9. 9 is, is to uh, 42. So 42 is 43 basically. 43 is against uh, you know this number is basically against getting a number card of spades while this is uh, 9 is uh, the number of card of spades. So 9 is to 43 is the odds. So to convert this 9 is to 43 into the probability uh, you know it's very simple let, let this be x and let's be y. So it's basically uh, to, to convert this one is you know uh, we are actually dividing x divided by x plus y. So that is equal to 9 divided by 9 plus 43 that is equal to 9 divided by 52. So is equal to 0 0.17. So that is the relationship between odds and the probability. Odds versus probability. So it is quite similar. So what is that actually the odds? Next question. Probability of getting 3 in dice. Let us calculate the probability of getting 3 in dice. So to get number 3 in the dice, so that is the question number 3 we have to get in the dice. So there is only one way to get number 3 out of this is only one option right the success is only one and n is basically there are 6 ways to get the outcome. So n is 6 this is success success is equal to to get the 3 that is only one way that we can get number 3. So total is 6 so 1 divided by 6 so this is our probability. So 1 divided by 6 is nothing but 0 0.17. So that chance is quite low as you can see it's only 17 percent chance to get a 3 in the, the uh, you know in the, the dice one throw in the dice. So this is how to calculate the probability is very simple. Probability of getting a middle berth in a sleeper compartment the railway sleeper compartment what is the probability of getting a middle berth. So to get the middle berth in the sleeper compartment, as you see the sleeper compartment there is actually 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2. So this is how the one coupe looks like. So of which the middle is only this and this. So that means uh, the, the number of ways the success can happen is 2. 
out of the total number of ways is 8 ways so 8 so 2 by 8 we can make it is equal to 1 divided by 4 so that is equal to 0 0.25 so that is the probability of getting a middle birth in the sleeper class group so this side birth of course these side births are not really middle birth this is only a lower and upper as you can see that so the chance of getting middle birth as we see that is quite low it's only 25 percent is chance to get the middle birth but we know that the people who are opting for middle birth is very less so the actual chance of getting the middle birth is far higher so for that we have to use the bayesian logic that we will solve it in later module probability of not getting a middle birth in sleeper compartment well in the previous one we saw that the probability of a p a probability of success is equal to 0 0.25 to get the middle birth so now this question is not to get the middle birth so this is basically probability of a prime not getting the middle birth is equal to probability of a there is this should be subtracted from 1 so basically 1 minus probability of a so this is number 1 1 minus probability of a is probability of a prime not getting middle birth so that is equal to 1 minus 0 0.25 so that is equal to 0 0.75 so as you can see the probability is quite high not to get the middle birth because it is 75 percentage chance so in reality this is quite less you know that we will explain when we talk about the Bayesian uh, logic probability that you guess birthday not including the year of your friend what is the probability of guessing the birthday not including the year of your friend well to guess the date of date of birth of your friend there is only one way this can happen so this is probability of success is equal to one while probability of uh, you know the total number of ways the event can happen is there are 365 days in one year so out of which there is only one day that is a birth so to guess that birthday uh, correctly this is the probability which is very low as we can see that 1 divided by 365 is equal to 0 0.0027 so that is only 0.27 percentage is uh, the chance or uh, uh, to guess the the you know the date of birth date of birth or the the birthday of your friend so which is quite low you know that you should know that there is something called birthday paradox so the birthday paradox is that in a set of n randomly chosen people some pair of them will have the same birthday so for example if there are 366 students in the class then probably that at least one pair will have the same birthday is one so because only 365 days are there in a year so if there are 366 people definitely two will have the same birthday but probably most of them intuitively do not think that you don't really need 366 students to get the probability of one if the class is modest like 40 students or even 50 students that's such a small class probability of having two students having exactly same birthday is almost 97 percent in the case of uh, 50 so this can be computed using a, a binomial equation which i'm not explaining but uh, this paradox is known as birthday paradox so you don't really need such an astronomical number to have two people having the exactly same birthday just 50 uh, persons will have definitely have or almost uh, there is a very high chance to have 97 percentage is a chance or 0.97 is a probability with uh, just 50 students having two birthdays having the same birthdays so in summary there are three views of probability classical that is laplace view frequentist view and bayesian view so the most important use of probability in sciences is that it enable us to quantify degree of uncertainty thank you